Today's topic, web development. Is it simple? Yes, yes it is. As a matter of fact, building a website nowadays has never been easier. Thanks to various website builders, you can pop out a good looking functioning website without any programming knowledge. But what about creating a website from scratch? Literally starting with a blank screen and coding each and every individual element yourself. Is that simple to do? Again, yes. Maybe not as simple as using a website builder, but it is pretty simple. I'll show you in just a few minutes. If you're completely new to web development, it shouldn't take you more than a week or two to get a website up and running. That's because you don't need a lot of tools to do it. The majority of you watching already know that you can build a website with just three simple tools. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are essentially the three pillars of web development. So if you can code a perfectly functioning website with just these three simple technologies, why is there such an overwhelming number of web development tools, frameworks, and libraries involved in the web development process? And are they necessary? Do they overcomplicate web dev? And how do you pick one? These are the questions I'll be exploring in this video. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. I'm happy to be promoting their amazing product again, the E7 Standing Desk. I've been using the E7 for the past 5 months now, and it's been as sleek and functional as the first day I got it. The best thing about this desk is obviously its height adjustability. Sitting at a desk for a long period of time will take a toll on your body, but the E7 makes it a breeze to switch from sitting to standing. Besides that, it's very durable thanks to its carbon steel frame, so wobbling is non-existent. Plus, with a weight capacity of 355 pounds, you can load it up with all of your essentials without any worries. The E7 also comes with some cool extras such as collision detection, cable management, and even a USB port for convenient device charging. And all of that is reasonably priced, making ergonomic workspaces accessible to everyone. So if you're ready to upgrade your work setup and embrace the benefits of a standing desk, use my code YTBNY30 for an extra 30% off on the E7 and E7 Pro. Link in the description below. Now back to the video. Let's start with the basics. I'll demonstrate how easy it is to build a simple website using just these three technologies. The website I'll create will focus on the topic of why it is in fact better to wipe standing up after taking a dump than to wipe sitting down. And I'll guide you through the roles that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript play in shaping that website. First up, we got HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. I like to think of it as the human skeletal system. This language is the basic foundation and structure of a web page, kind of like how the human skeleton is the basic structure of a human. HTML allows me to set up and organize the content of my web page using what are called tags. So here for example, I have the website title, it's called standingwipers.com, along with a heading and some navigation links, paragraphs, and pictures. Now, if I wanted to stop here, I could. This alone suffices as a website. But let's be honest, it looks horrible. It doesn't look that pretty. And this is where our next tool comes into play. CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and its job is to basically stylize your website. With CSS, we gain control over the layout, colors, fonts, and sizing of our website. So if HTML is our skeleton, think of CSS as the stylus that adds flair to the whole look. Magic. It's the one in charge of choosing the right skin tone, hair color, body shape, hairstyle, you name it. You don't necessarily need it to have a functioning website, but it is important. Don't let others fool you into thinking that personality is the only thing that matters. Go to the gym, lose some weight, and get a haircut. Just being yourself isn't going to cut it. Now look at that. Doesn't that look so much better? Now again, if I wanted to stop right here, I could. But there's one problem. I can't interact with any of the content on this page. Introducing our last tool, JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language, and its job is to basically enhance the interactivity and dynamic aspects of web pages. So for example, when you see things like drop-down menus or interactive buttons or contact forms on a site, that's most likely JavaScript at work. So continuing with our analogy, if HTML is our skeleton and CSS is our stylist, JavaScript would be the actions humans do, such as talking, walking, master. So without JavaScript, all you would have is a static web page. And earlier, I said that was a problem. But it's only a problem if you want users to interact with your site. If you don't and just want to display information, then a static page is perfectly fine. But most websites are interactive, so let's add a little bit of that to standingwipers.com. I'm going to add a button that says press me if you're a standing wiper. And it's going to have a counter that increments by one every single time it is pressed. And just like that, our website is complete. Go ahead and search standingwipers.com and you will find this majestic webpage on your device. Believe it or not, this is actually the first website I've ever made. So as you've just seen, building a website using only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript wasn't that difficult. But the question is, are they enough? Is it ideal to have only these tools in your web development toolkit? 
Probably not, and I'll tell you why. As amazing as my website is, it's no YouTube or Amazon, right? These websites are way more complex. They contain large amounts of dynamic content, intricate user interactions, and state and data management systems. You won't have a fun time constructing all of that with just these, unless you're a masochist, or a tryhard, or a Linux user. So yeah, because it would be hell to manage all of that with just the big three, frameworks were invented. The purpose of frameworks is just to make the process of creating complex applications faster and easier. They're just tools or code other people have written to simplify vanilla code. While a website that only uses HTML, CSS, and JavaScript might require this many lines of code, using a framework to build the same website would only require this many lines. In the case of front-end development, CSS and JavaScript frameworks are widely talked about. Let's begin with CSS frameworks and why they exist. CSS is shit, use Tailwind. Now let's move on to JavaScript frameworks. JavaScript has a lot of frameworks, and I mean a lot. The reason why there's so many is because developers love reinventing the wheel. And that's not just a meme, that's the undeniable truth. It's like they collectively decided that reinventing the wheel was their favorite way to pass the time. I mean, who needs a functional wheel when you can spend hours crafting your own, am I right? I'm surprised they haven't started a wheel reimagining club where they can share their unique wheel designs and argue about whose wheel rolls the smoothest. But no, the serious boring answer is that no framework matches everyone's needs. It's similar to why there are so many programming languages. All frameworks essentially do the same thing, but each does it a little bit differently. And those differences matter a lot to developers. For example, React uses JSX for rendering components, allowing developers to write HTML within JavaScript. Get the phone, call 911. While something like Vue supports an HTML-based template syntax. Differences like these for developers are like choosing between coffee and tea. Both beverages, but the taste and experience are distinctly different. But are these frameworks necessary? No, they're not. They're just vanilla JavaScript under the hood. Meaning anything they can do, you can also do. Some developers actually prefer just vanilla, as they have ultimate customization control and freedom over their application. Another argument I often hear is that frameworks lead to code bloating, which means they contain a lot of functionalities that may not be needed for a particular project, in turn making your program waste resources or And these are okay arguments against the use of frameworks, but that doesn't mean they're not helpful, as they make things significantly easier, especially when working on a project with multiple people. The correct take is, if you're building a project and HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can get the work done without much hassle, do that. Else, use a framework. Now do these technologies overcomplicate web development? I feel like they do, in the sense that there are too many to choose from. There's always new ones coming up and older ones dying out. And if you're completely new to it all, it can be a bit challenging to navigate around all of them. Which is why it's always best to do some research, watch some YouTube videos, read some Reddit threads, and hope for the best. When it comes to deciding which ones to learn, the honest answer is, learn the ones that will land you a job. F your preferences, f your philosophies, get money. In other words, master one of these, as they are still the most widely used frameworks in the industry. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle of your video, but um, actually, React is a library. In summary, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript alone are enough. Just not enough to get you a job. If you're building a small project, you can get away with just using the three. However, bigger and more complex projects will require the robust capabilities offered by additional tools and frameworks. This is where front-end frameworks like Angular or Vue and back-end frameworks like Django or Express come into play. There is no point in arguing with other nerds about which framework is the best, because in reality, the best one is the one that puts the most money in your pocket. I don't have a nice transition to end this video, so I'll just tell you this is the end. I'm somewhat new to web development, so I had my Discord members help me form cohesive thoughts around this topic. So big shout outs to them. And also thanks to my Discord admin for helping me put my website online. Join the Discord by the way, if you haven't already. Leave a like, subscribe, and help me reach 100k. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.